All right, now that you've made your grid for your shading grid, we're going to talk a little bit on how to shade today. You should have a very sharp pencil. You should also have your erasers, your pink eraser and your gray eraser, and maybe you might need your ruler a little later, probably not though. And you're going to look at this part of your hand, this ball part of your hand is the part of the hand that's going to be uh, sitting on the table. When you hold your pencil, you want to hold your pencil so that it's got a for, uh, I don't know, not quite a 45 degree angle. Well, it's going off pretty high. You don't want to be holding your pencil down like this, right? Because we're going to get a nice, thin, crisp line. And you're going to rotate back and forth on the ball of your hand here. Here, I'm going to take my pencil, I'm going to start from a corner, and I'm going to start doing a nice line across the number eight, which is going to end up being the darkest. As you can see, I didn't get everywhere, right? That's fine. We've got several layers to go. I'm going to turn my paper and I'm also turning my pencil so I have a nice sharp edge to my pencil as I go. Here I'm going to do a second layer. I'm going to my pencil and I'm going to rotate my paper again. Now I'm going to do a third layer over the top of this and as you can see it's starting to get filled in a little bit. Each time I rotate my pencil and I rotate my paper. Now it's starting to get a little bit more even. And I fill in a little bit closer to the edges on some of them. You don't want to press down hard. You want to be pressing down just barely so that you get a nice even texture going across there. And you're just going to keep going until you get at least eight layers on. Constantly turning your pencil. For me, it's still not quite dark enough yet in the center area that's filled in nicely, so I'm going along here, rotating it back and forth on the round part of my hand. And every time I pick my pencil up, I rotate my pencil so that I'm using the edge of a new section. You get a nice crisp edge. Now, that I've got it filled in fairly dark. I'm now going to spend some time cleaning up the edges. To do that, I'm going to start from the edge and work my way in. Every time I pick up my pencil, I try to rotate my pencil, rotating my pencil as I go helps. Later on, once we get to the other shapes, you're going to have to be careful not to smear them with the base of your hand as you're rotating your paper. Now I'm going to squint at it. Squinting at it reduces the amount of light coming in to your iris and you can see spots that are lighter. To do that is helpful. And I'm using, instead of using straight lines, I'm using round curvy lines that go like this over the top. All right? Curvy lines over the top to kind of fill in areas where I'm squinting and I'm seeing little holes. This pushes the little pieces of graphite that are loose all the way into the little cracks of where those places are. Get a little spot over here. Get this little corner down here. And then I have a pretty nice number eight. It takes a second, eight, you know, takes the longest out of this whole project because it's the darkest, so therefore it takes the longest to put it on nicely. When you're done with eight, it should look gravelly or sandy, not shiny or silky, but nice and gravelly like it was a bunch of sand thrown down from the beach. What if you make a mistake and it gets too dark? Well, you don't want to use this, this eraser because it will just smear it. You want to use this one. And where something's too dark, let's say there's, I could see a little patch right there. You can come in, push it down. You see how it'll pull it off evenly. It just picks it right up. Then you can come back and integrate it in without it looking smeared like it does on the other um, eraser which will just make it all blurry and not look very nice, right? Here you can see I've kind of camouflaged that all back in now. Now I'm going to do number seven a little bit because it has to step down on number seven. So you do exactly the same thing. You take your pencil, 
you rotate it on the ball of your hand each time you go across you get a little bit more of it done you rotate your pencil you rotate your paper you spend a little bit of time each time getting right up against the edge on where you're starting and then maybe not so close to the edge on the ice and you're trying to get it just a little bit lighter than number eight. All right, it's getting kind of close. Now I'm going to see this big white line in between. I have to get that the same color. Number eight needs to be nice and crisp, so I'll crisp that up and then I'll pull number seven up to it so there's a transition where you can see the definite where this square starts and where this one starts. And then I'll squint, I'm trying to squint a little bit so I can get little holes, get little white spots. That helps. Think you're a little old granny or something inspecting it, right? While you're doing it and you're going in little ovals on places to kind of clean it up and little straight lines. Don't forget to turn your pencil. Right. All right, then you'd work your way down. Can you see the difference between eight and seven? See how it works down? Then the next one will get a little lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter. If it one gets too dark, you can use a little eraser to pick some of it up. Right? If you get one that's, that has a big step down, you can darken all the ones a little bit as you go. Number one, though, is really hard. So I'm going to give you an a idea on how to do that one. So on this one, instead of pressing at all, I lift my pencil up. I touch it to the paper and I lift. I'm bare, I'm just rubbing it. It's just the weight of the pencil on there. Because you have to get three or four layers and it has to be a one, that means it needs to be really light. So here I am, barely touching it. I'm just letting the weight of the pencil start to fill it in because I want it super light. This one's actually the hardest one to do because you have to vary your pressure so much. It's very hard to do that and then clean it up nicely so that it looks good. All right, after you get this all beautifully done, please don't forget to take a nice picture of it and turn it in. I've included several samples for you to look at. Thank you for listening.